So I'll be showing you how I stretch the cloth on the frame itself. So what you're going to need is, and you can do this upright, but I'm going to do it on the table because I think it's a little easier for you to see. So in today's workshop, you're going to need some kind of tufting cloth. Now, uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding about this. It, it must be something that has a significant amount of holes in it. And hopefully you can see that. This is the tufting cloth that I sell in the shop. You can use monk's cloth or linen or burlap, but the reality is those things aren't really up to the task of most machine tufting. So we really recommend not wasting your time and money on those and just getting the real cloth. Um, okay, so you want more than what you need by a couple of inches, and the reason is you're going to be actually stretching this on the frame itself. So it doesn't have to be as big as I have here, but if it is this big, then all you do is cut. You'll just cut off the excess in the end. The lines on this cloth, it's really helpful to use as a guide so that you know you're stretching it all the way. Uh, the lines on here are great as a guide so that you know you're stretching this straight. So the first thing that you want to do is start in one corner. And I'm paying attention to where the yellow line here is next to the frame. The next is, and I'm putting, I want to make sure to have plenty at the top here. So I'm going to redo that. So I have I think a couple of inches here at the top. Okay, so now I go to this corner and I'm stretching. I can see the weave of the fabric itself. So now I'm stretching this across, pulling this way, pulling this way so I can see and I'm, I'm watching the thing and so that it's nice and tight. And I'm also maintaining, I'm also watching where the yellow line is here. Now you go back down to this corner and again watching where the yellow line is. So the yellow line is running right against the frame here. So I'm just stretching that straight down so that I have a nice straight line here. And then you're going to do that on the final corner. I'm pulling this a little bit diagonal. I know I need to try to get this line to be in the same location at the frame as it was on the opposing corner. Okay, so now I have it attached to just four corners. The next thing that I like to do is attach this first on the side that has the least amount of fabric. And I'm just, I'm not really pulling, I'm just getting it into the tacks itself. Okay, now I'm switching to this side here and I'm just going to, again, kind of just press this down into the tacks itself. So this is nice and maintaining this nice line here. Okay, now I'm pulling across this way and I want to make sure that I'm keeping my line here. That's really important. It makes tufting easier, transferring your design, all of that. So I just want to try to maintain a nice line. I'm not giving this a crazy amount of pull. I'm just kind of getting it where the lines are still straight and everything's looking good. Now on the bottom, so I'm, I'm working on the final side here. This is the side that I'm really going to give this a good amount of muscle. So I'm putting quite a bit of pressure against the frame here and I want to get this as tight as I possibly can. So I just want to really stretch this down. So you should have a nice tight design. This the fabric itself, the fabric itself should be very tight, as tight as you can possibly get. The reason I like the tacks uh, that are here is that during tufting, usually the cloth can become loose, and this is this is a great uh, method because then you can just go in and retighten it if you need to. Okay, so now I have obviously a lot extra at the bottom and a lot extra on the side and now you can cut that off. You don't want to cut it 
super close to the edge, but you want this to maybe a couple of inches. And on our tufting cloth, the lines are two inches apart. So you want to give yourself a couple of inches. 